Hi everyone, and welcome back to the laboratory. Today we'll be manufacturing elemental bromine using a readily available bromide salt. In this case, potassium bromide. It's found as a pool spa brominator. It's uh, used as an alternative to chlorine for keeping bacteria levels down in pools and spas. The bromide ion is easily oxidized, and so by adding an oxidizing agent to a solution of bromide, it's pretty easy to free elemental bromine. So here what we'll do is uh, We'll add sulfuric acid first to potassium bromide, which will yield mostly potassium bisulfate and uh, hydrobromic acid. We could also, uh, or the sulfuric acid will also oxidize some of that bromide into bromine um, and make potassium sulfite and some other things like that. But uh, the main reaction that will happen is this one right here. And then to boost that oxidation to make sure that we get all of the available bromine, we'll add an oxidizing agent, in this case hydrogen peroxide, um, which will oxidize the hydrobromic acid into bromine and water. And that's a very convenient reaction for isolating bromine, and of course, then we can simply distill the bromine off at 58.8 Celsius. In fact, this reaction is exothermic, so the bromine will, be, will probably distill off without any addition of extra heat, but we can anyway just to make sure the reaction goes to completion. There are many other ways to make bromine, and usually they involve uh, first forming uh, hydrogen bromide and then adding some sort of oxidizing agent. Some use uh, manganese dioxide and sulfuric acid, some use potassium permanganate and sulfuric acid, um, and you can actually use chlorine to oxidize bromine, and if you add chlorine to a solution of potassium bromide, you end up with potassium chloride and bromine. Um, all these methods work just fine, but uh, this one, as demonstrated by uh, Magpie from sciencemadness.org, um, happens to work the best for me. I've tried a couple of different methods, and this one has remained my favorite, so I decided to demonstrate it for you today. This is the apparatus that I use to generate the bromine with. The apparatus begins with a 500 milliliter round bottom flask that is charged with the bromide and acid solution. That's connected through a still adapter to a 250 milliliter pressure equalizing addition funnel to which the peroxide solution is charged and is allowed to drip slowly into the bromide and acid mixture producing bromine. The bromine generates an exothermic reaction, or as it's generated it produces an exothermic reaction, um, which will cause it to boil through the still head, through this tube, and to the condenser. In the event that the exotherm isn't great enough, and in fact this is the case, um, to drive all the bromine ac across, then I can start heating with this heating mantle to finish driving the bromine off. Once the bromine is driven off, it reaches this condenser where it is condensed at 58.8 degrees Celsius using ice cold water flowing through the condenser, and the ice cold water is provided by a bucket full of ice water and a small submersible pump. The bromine then drips off the condenser and through this vacuum adapter here and into the collection flask, and the vacuum adapter is just there to provide an exit to the outside world uh, to equalize the pressure in the whole apparatus, because you never want to heat a closed system, of course, and you'll end up blowing things up. Uh, this also affords us the ability to attach a tube to this nipple here, which will allow us to vent any excess bromine that may evaporate uh, safely to the back of the fume hood, where it will not be in the room. The collection flask is sitting in a glass bowl, which will be filled with ice water, which will help prevent uh, a lot of bromine from evaporating during the synthesis, and will help keep things under control. I'm running this on a 2 molar scale based on bromine, which means that we'll need 100 milliliters of water, and 70 milliliters of 94% sulfuric acid. You can use any concentration of sulfuric acid you want, just be sure to adjust the concentration. Always add the acid slowly, and keep in mind that this is very exothermic. And don't forget to turn on stirring. The contents of the flask are now quite hot and will need to cool before we add the sodium bromide. If we don't, the hydrobromic acid formed will boil out into the room and cause lots of problems. So we'll give this a few minutes. In the meantime, first ensuring that the stopcock is closed, we can load 114 milliliters of 29% hydrogen peroxide into the addition funnel.
Once the sulfuric acid flask is cool enough to touch, we can begin to add the sodium bromide to it. Keeping the flask a little bit warm will allow the sodium bromide to go into solution faster. Uh, the dissolution of sodium bromide is quite endothermic, so it's going to maintain its temperature just fine. Of course, we'll want to do this with rapid stirring, so put it back in the mantle. Sulfuric acid can actually oxidize some bromide to bromine, however the equilibrium is quite small. But you can see that it's evident here by the presence of this orange color which indicates free bromine. And that's all the sodium bromide added. If you're like me and you don't have a funnel that goes to the bottom of the flask, you can use a little squirt of distilled water from a wash bottle to wash the bromide from the neck of the flask. I'll now raise the flask into place and secure it with a clamp. While the bromide and sulfuric acid are stirring, we can start to prepare our ice baths, first around the collection flask here and also in the big ice bucket. We can then turn on the pump and begin circulating ice water through the condenser. I'll then slowly begin to add the hydrogen peroxide solution, causing bromine to form in the boiling flask and distill over. So you can see the flask has gotten pretty dark, and the vapor front of bromine is right here. Eventually it's going to make its way over to the condenser, and you can see there's already some uh, stray vapors condensing on it right now. And it'll eventually drip into this ice-cold receiving flask here. And then we can store it. And you'll note I've got this tube connected to the waste stream here, which is going uh, to the back of the fume hood. So uh, it dilutes it sufficiently that uh, it's not going to hurt anything. We have just received we have just received the first drop of bromine it looks like. And the second. While the bromine is distilling, I'm going to measure about 30 milliliters of sulfuric acid, this is concentrated, uh, and I'm going to put it in the freezer. And what this will do is when the bromine is done, we'll pour it on top of the sulfuric acid, actually we'll mix it with the sulfuric acid, and then the sulfuric acid will float on top because Bromine is quite dense, and anyway, the, the aim is to dry the bromine before we put it in the storage bottle. And besides, this sharp tip here on the uh, on the set funnel will allow us to get it into the storage bottle much more easily. Once all the hydrogen peroxide is added, the reaction will begin to slow down considerably, and uh, you can see that there's not a whole lot of roaming coming over anymore. And that's evidenced also by these drops of water that are in here. Um, and you can still see there's, there's bromine gas moving up and uh, into the condenser, and we're still getting uh, drops of bromine here, but uh, we'll need to begin to heat this flask to drive the rest of the bromine off. Don't worry about any of the water that happens to come over, because it'll simply float on top of the bromine and we'll remove it the next step. So we'll heat the flask until this becomes a nice pale color, which will indicate that we've driven off the bromine. Uh, it'll also be evidenced by the lack of a drip rate anymore, or this distillate will start to run clear. The reaction has run mostly to completion now, as evidenced by the lack of bromine in the vapors here. You can see there's a bit of uh, vapor that's dancing around right in here, in the still head, but uh, that's mostly from reflux because of the, uh, the pressure equalizing addition funnel here. So this reaction is essentially complete. We're not getting very much bromine left over, there's not really much more to be had, and all we're doing now is simply contaminating our product with some water. So you can see those dark colored droplets coming down, uh, but there's also, or the majority of them are 
of an aqueous component and uh, they're just sort of colored dark red by a little bit of uh, bromine on the surface. So I'm turning the heating off. And you can see the final state of the flask. A nice orange color, no solids. Uh, the only thing left in the bottom are the stir bars, of course. Getting the rest of the bromine out of the apparatus is easy if you have a good fume hood. You simply just need to open the connections and let things air out for a second. Notice how light colored these tubes are getting now that the, uh, now they're venting to the atmosphere. I'm just now for the first time getting a, getting a whiff of the bromine, and that's because you can see it's uh, falling out of the condenser here and escaping through the side arm. And that's okay. It actually smells quite like chlorine, and you can see how well my fume, my fume hood's pulling it right out. I can actually see it right in front of me, but uh, I can't, I can barely smell it. You can see the final product here if I wipe some of the frost from the flask. And you'll notice it's a dark, blood red, uh, not very viscous liquid, and in this case it's got a little bit of water floating on top. If I get close you can see the water, how it's forming sort of a donut on the, on the surface there. The bromine can now be washed with the sulfuric acid from the freezer. The freezer will prevent the sulfuric acid from getting warm when it reacts with the water, uh, warm enough to boil the bromine that is. Uh, and then of course once we shake the bromine with that little bit of sulfuric acid, I'll simply stick it in a little storage bottle. You can see that the sulfuric acid floats on top of the bromine because the bromine is so dense. Always remember to do this in a good hood because bromine is just as deadly as chlorine when it comes to uh, breathing problems. I'll now gently swirl, venting often. Uh, not a lot of mixing is needed to wash the bromine because the uh, the sulfuric acid is is forced to the top, and so is the water, just because of its density. So um, there's not really it's not really a big issue to not shake this up, which I prefer not to do because uh, it's got a decent vapor pressure, and uh, shaking it up against the now warm glass is going to generate some pressure in there, which could cause problems. As you can see already, we've got a significant amount of vapor in there, and the sulfuric acid is floating nicely on top of the layer of bromine. And we'll let that sit for a little bit, and then I'll drain it into the storage bottle. Remember never to allow bromine to contact your skin. It's, it, it'll cause some extremely painful burns. So here's the bromine. A very, very dense, it's very heavy, a dense, uh, mobile, volatile liquid. And it's blood red, but you can't really tell because this bottle is amber. Anyway, the best way to store it is in a tightly capped bottle and in the, uh, in the freezer where it'll actually freeze to a solid and not really have much of a vapor pressure. Um, so it keeps for a long time and uh, can be used whenever you need it, just simply thaw it out. Anyway, I'll be using this bromine in an upcoming video, actually several upcoming videos, but I just thought I'd show you how to make it, or how I go about making it. And uh, if you really like this video, uh, please click the like button, and I know I enjoyed making it. And as always, please uh, subscribe and comment.